Welcome to the Green Left Report, media for the 99%. I'm Mel Barnes. And I'm Peter Boyle. And this show is focused on the legacy of the 21st century's most influential political figure, Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, who died on March the 5th. Chavez's death is a huge blow to Venezuelans and to all those across Latin America and around the world struggling for a better future. But as shown by the millions who have rallied in the streets after his death chanting, I am Chavez, the Venezuelan Bolivarian revolution is very much alive. The death of Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez Frias caused a flood of emotions in the country's capital, Caracas. <laughs> Vice President Maduro delivered the news during the evening rush hour on Tuesday when many people were heading home from work. People stopped and cried. <laughs> Chavez coffin was parade in the streets of Caracas. Men, women and children said their final goodbye to the men whom they call Comandante Chavez. He changed the life of the poor in this country and the political landscape all over Latin America. But what will the future hold for this country? Chavez will be replaced by Vice President Nicolás Maduro before a special election will take place. But for many here, Maduro already has their support. <laughs> Joining us to discuss Chavez's legacy, why Western leaders hated him, and where to now for the revolution in Venezuela and beyond, is Arelis Sumabila, a Venezuelan who has worked with Chavez um, and helped establish the Venezuelan Bolivarian Indigenous University. Fred Fuentes, who is part of the Venezuela Analysis Editorial Collective and who has reported for Green Left Weekly from Venezuela between 2007 and 2010, as well as Rodrigo Acuna, who is completing a PhD of the Chavez government's foreign relations policy. So thank you all of you for, for being here. Thank you. So just before we start the discussion, uh, let's hear from Venezuela Analysis' Tamara Pearson, who is in Venezuela at the moment, to get a sense of the feeling on the ground. We were shocked. We were upset. And at about 6 p.m., we all started to walk down towards the main plaza. All my friends and comrades were there. The feeling of sadness was so intense. It's a sort of intense sadness that you don't get usually for presidents, because Chavez, for us, wasn't just a president. He was... He was a comrade and a friend and an inspiration. There are speeches and rallies and a lot of chanting. My sense from talking to people is people are determined to fight on. I'm not concerned that this revolution is over because, because its leader has passed away. Very much the opposite. I feel now that people have a sense of responsibility. The last thing to say is that because the opposition's main weapon against us is the media, uh, it's really important that everyone in all their countries are reading sites like Venezuela Analysis, like Green Left Weekly, all the, the alternative news sites and getting the real story about what's going on here and spreading that because the, the lies that the mainstream media has been putting out about us and about our president is so outrageous. I wanted to ask, first of all, Rodrigo, what do you think are the biggest achievements of the Venezuelan revolution? Well, if you read the uh, publications like The Economist, you would think that Hugo Chavez basically just uh, handed out a few chickens at the local Sunday markets, and that was about it. If you study uh, Venezuela in a serious manner, you will find out that at a national level, Chavez carried out many policies, such as in health, in education. He came to power, and there were roughly 60% of Venezuelans who were on or below the poverty line. Now, in 14 years, his, his government carried out massive reforms, which benefited vast numbers of Venezuelans, hence why he was re-elected on numerous occasions. 
at a regional level and an, at an international level, his policies also had an enormous impact. He contributed to uh, creating the uh, Bolivarian Alliance for the Americas. He contributed to creating uh, Petro Caribe, which is a uh, organization which sells petroleum to Caribbean and Central American countries. Uh, so, and then they can reinvest some of those funds in programs in health and education. And probably one of his largest achievements, together with Brazil, was creating the Union of South American Nations, which is basically an organization in South America where South American countries can get together and discuss regional issues without the presence of the United States, uh, which has traditionally been the case in the organization of American states. So how important um, is that for the region and, and how does that change people's lives? For Venezuelans and for Latin Americans who have uh, benefited, for example, from Mission Milagro, which is an eye care program uh, together with Cuban doctors, that's been enormous because if you're a poor Salvadorian um, living in some working class suburb, your chances of having eye care are uh, almost next to zero. At an institutional level, the situation in Paraguay uh, last year where the constitutional president was uh, removed quite dubiously by Congress and most South American countries, Latin American countries not recognizing that government, that's important because traditionally what would happen during the Cold War is there would be a military coup in Chile or there would be a military coup in Brazil or in Argentina and then quite, quite quickly a spokesman from the US State Department would come out and say democracy has been reinstalled in Brazil or in Venezuela and then everyone else in Latin America would clap alongside a US diplomat. So that has changed and that is really important. The mourning over Chavez's death did not take place in Venezuela alone. But some South American leaders also expressed their grief. Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa has declared three days of national mourning. The presidents of Uruguay, Argentina and Bolivia traveled to Caracas to show their support. Que luchó por su patria. Por la patria grande como Simón Bolívar. Even in his death, Chavez rallied the region and his legend has just begun. I realize you, you're a Venezuelan and you've actually worked with Chavez, yes. particularly on indigenous programs. Yes. What do you think is the big legacy? The big legacy of Chavez is equal society, is equal distribution of the benefit of oil in the country. Chavez look for a society where people be more united United has a social class because in our country this social class determine life of people very, very clear, especially for the indigenous people. When he was only 29 years old, he was working with the indigenous people in a poor state. He's always, from the time that he was young, he was looking for this better life for the people. I always remember that he used to say, everybody has the right to have a nice life. Everybody has the right to enjoy the benefit of the oil. And I believe he has been doing a lot of reform in education. The fact that he's approved one indigenous university. The fact that many of these indigenous people right now has healthcare, education, the right to go to university. First time that one president goes so close to indigenous people. So Fred, Chavez spoke of 21st century socialism. What does this 21st century socialism mean? Well, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a, a big discussion that's not just had in Venezuela, but, you know, it's more broadly in Latin America. And I think in regards to your first question, that's perhaps another legacy that really Chavez has done that, you know, he, when he came to power in 98, really, even amongst the left, the word socialism was sort of a dirty word and it really took someone like Chavez, whom most of us were surprised, when in 2005, you know, ex-military official uh, comes out and says socialism is the only alternative. I mean, just that alone, I think, is a, a legacy that he, he leaves behind us. What is 21st century socialism? Well, in fact, in that very same speech that he gave in 2005, Chavez was in some ways clear on what it wasn't, i.e. how it differed from 20th century socialism. Uh, so it couldn't be authoritarian. It couldn't be something that saw the state or the party as leading society, that it had to be the people. It couldn't rely on lack of democracy, that popular participation was a, a central element. That sort of bureaucratic centralised planning that we saw in the Soviet Union, rather it had to be the direct involvement of people in a bottom-up 
uh, process. These are some of the elements of, of a project that is uh, still in formation and still in debate and discussion. I, I don't think you can really say there's as yet a defined uh, blueprint for 21st century socialism, but perhaps that's, that's what makes it such an interesting and important process, the fact that people are learning, and not just Venezuelans, of course, who are in the process of constructing it, but everywhere around the world, the left is looking towards Venezuela as really arguably the only place, you know, with the, I suppose, the exception of Cuba, where, you know, a country is, is deciding to build a, a concrete alternative to capitalism. As Fred points out, Chavez had the courage to bring back the word socialism, and that's important because many governments or many left-wing parties in Latin America thought, okay, the Cold War is over, the Soviet Union is dead, and, and we cannot begin to think of another alternative. Yes, the state can play a role in the economy, but it must be complementary to the markets. Chavez completely disagrees. The state has to play a fundamental role in the economy. I do not think that uh, foreign transnationals can just arrive in a country and do as they see fit. They must pay their taxes. They must work in a manner which is directed towards benefiting people. Uh, and that's what Chavez did, and that's why uh, his legacy is important. Aurelius, how much of what has happened in Venezuela can be called a revolution? Is it more just that there were some reforms from the top, that the government implemented some reforms, or was this a real empowerment of ordinary people who now can participate in, in political life? I believe it's not something that is superficial. No, no, this is very deep. If you go to the barrios, if you go to the poor people, they start to take conscience what is going on. It's a process that national identity. We are Venezuelan. We live here. We want to make a better country. People understand more and more and more. It has to be with the revolution. It has to be with the education that the revolution has been bringing to the barrios, to the little town. The struggle must continue. The resistance will survive again and again and another time. You won't be hurt and brave as you take the line. The line of battle and of games and of silly signs. And remind you, remind. All of you have studied Latin America and there have been populist leaders in Latin America, but how did the track records of previous populist leaders and Hugo Chavez compare? There's a very clear difference that it exists between Chavez and, you know, say a figure like uh, Perón in Argentina or some of the previous sort of nationalist military figures uh, in Peru and Bolivia. And that was Chavez's central focus on the question of popular participation. And none of these other regimes really encouraged real independent, uh, you know, autonomous organisation by society, whereas under the Chavez government you've seen a complete flourishing and many of the studies that have done have shown that never before has Venezuelan society seen this kind of level of community workplace organisation. And more than that, a real sense amongst the people that these organisations mean something. Generally populist leaders want to stay in power forever and fear anything that can raise a challenge uh, to them. Uh, Chavez was always like, you know, the, the people are the ones that have to take the reign and I think that's something that shouldn't be forgotten now, you know, Chavez in his, one of his last speeches, you know, where he sort of announced that, you know, if he was to pass away that he wanted Nicolas Maduro to be the candidate. Again there, he was explicit, I want Nicolas Maduro together with the people, governing with the people, to keep this process going forward. And that focus very much differentiates him from other regimes that may have done a bit of wealth redistribution, but certainly uh, feared any kind of mobilisation that was outside of their control. I think, in fact, Chavez encouraged it, and it was very largely why he was able to survive against the, all the opposition attacks against him, be that the military coup in 2002, be that the, the strike in the oil industry at the end of 2002, 2003, and many other um, battles that they've had to face since. Chavez stole the heart of the people, the poor people of Latin America. The fact that 
he has a big identity with the poor people because, because he came from a poor family, he came fr from a poor background, he has to educate himself in what is this society. He's living in a jail, he's living in a little town, very poor town, he's lived all this experience, made him a different leader. When I met Chavez the first time, Chavez living in Lorsa, in one town in Apure, very poor, in a little poor house with his three children and his wife. And he was working together to try to, that people unify. And he, what, what he's dreaming, was a dreaming, the dreaming of Bolivar, the dreaming to be integrated Latin America. Chavez's military background benefited him and the military was um, willing to support him and did support him during the coup in 2002. And if we look at other countries in Latin America, historically, when a leftist or a progressive government comes to power, what do the traditional elites do? They run to the United States and they say the communists have arrived, we need to have regime change, democracy needs to be restored. And that happened in, in Chile in 1973, numerous other examples in Latin American history. Now, in Venezuela, because Chavez came from the military, the standard play did not run according to script. And certainly many people in the United States were upset with that. The other thing, very quickly, is that of course Venezuela is an oil state. So once Chavez was willing to take on the large oil companies and tax them, he was able to reinvest that not only at a national level, but on a regional level. So bearing all that in mind, what do you expect to see developing in Venezuela? I expect to see Nicolás Maduro as a president. I expect to see him continue to work all the programs that Chávez did to improve the country, to look for more social, equal distribution of the resources, will be difficult to find somebody like Chavez. But I think in Nicolás Maduro, with the support of the people like Diosdado Cabello, who control the army, I think in, they learn a lot from Chavez. Because Maduro has a different background to Chavez. He, is a, he comes from the trade unions. But he, I mean, just like you said, he has had a long legacy of working with Chavez and you expect that he will carry out the same policies that Chavez did? I think there will be continuity. I think yeah. there will be continuity. Um, he was uh, the Venezuelan foreign minister since 2006. He played a very important role in bettering relations with uh, Colombia. I think there were many who wanted to see an escalation in the conflict between Colombia and Venezuela, and then you've got the, the left-wing guerrillas. Colombia is a very complicated country. Maduro played a, a very important role, and he actually goes back all the way to 1992 when Chavez was politically active and there was a attempted coup and et cetera, et cetera. He commands a lot of respect within the Chavista movement, yes. Yeah, I'd rather vote for a bus driver any day over a lawyer. Fred, what do you think of the future of the Bolivarian Revolution? Yeah, well, I never like to make predictions because then they're always bound to turn, out, turn wrong. When people used to ask me what would happen when, when Chavez died, or, you know, what would, you know, if Chavez was to disappear tomorrow, you know, what, what would occur? And I always just said, look, I, I think it would be a very complicated situation. But actually, over the last few months, and I think perhaps because of that awareness that at some, you know, uh, some point Chavez was going to possibly pass away, I get the sense that what we're seeing is a very profound collective discussion that's been happening amongst the Venezuelan people. You know, understanding that role that Chavez played, his, his absence will impact on the process, but therefore the people as a whole need to step up. And I think that's what's behind what you mentioned at the start, the, the We Are Chavez slogan that sort of has spontaneously emerged but has really caught the imagination of, of people across Venezuela. <laughs> We've been pitching our questions to the head and not to the heart, but this has been a very moving moment for a lot of us. I think, it, you know, perhaps some of our guests would like to say how they felt in these last few days. To me, it was broken my heart. Was a, not only my president, was my friend, was the man who I knew working hard for the community, working hard for the poor, the man that I knew during the 80s, dreaming we are better Venezuela, we are better society. 
his will be forever in the history of Venezuela. The government had an enormous impact on average Venezuelans' lives. Chavez personally had an enormous impact on many people's lives. Certainly it is, it is quite sad that uh, the Venezuelan president has, has passed away due to cancer. But I think that many Venezuelans are mobilized and I don't think that Chavismo is going to end with Hugo Chavez. Undoubtedly, you know, it's a sad moment for Chavez's family, for the Venezuelan people. Everyone knew that Chavez was sick. It certainly, you couldn't have ruled out that, mm. that it was gonna happen, but yet when it still happens, it's just like we've, you know, uh, happens in, in every family situation. We've got the old relative, you know, is about to pass away, but when it does happen, it, it still has an impact. But um, I think the, the positive side of it is, you know, having seen that, that massive outpouring out onto the streets, and not just in Venezuela, I mean, all across the world, actually, even here in Sydney on the very same day, you know, there were people gathering to remember and pay homage uh, to Chavez. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, for coming in and speaking to us Thank tonight. You. Now that's all for the Green Left Report. If you like the show as an antidote to the corporate media, please share it with others and consider a donation to keep this radical media project alive. And don't forget to subscribe to Green Left TV YouTube channel for the latest progressive videos. We leave you with some messages from the Sydney commemoration of the day that Chavez passed away. See you next time on the Green Left Report. Goodbye. Goodbye. Chavez, amigo, el pueblo está contigo. Chavez, amigo, el pueblo está contigo. We're here in solidarity with Chavez, with his family, with the people of Venezuela, and all the people around the world that are today both mourning the loss of Chavez, but also celebrating uh, his life and his achievements. Every one of us is Chavez. The Venezuela people are Chavez and they need to defend the, the revolution. The revolution rests on the shoulders of millions of people and it will carry on. Chavez was like an amazing fighter against imperialism and against capitalism. But the way we can honour his memory is to honour it by continuing the struggle. Continue the struggle for socialism of the 21st century. A true revolutionary is filled with feelings of real love. And this is Chavez. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Hasta la victoria siempre. Chavez lives on. The struggle continues. We are with Chavez. Chavez is with us. Ah, Chavez no se va. Oh, ah, Chavez no se va. Oh, ah, Chavez no se va.